Yo, what's up everybody? We got my CRF 125F right here. You guys asked a lot of questions about how I uh, turn it into a supermoto, how y'all can do it to y'all's. So today I'm gonna go ahead and break it down for you really quick. That way you know what I did and what you can do to make your bike into the same thing as mine. I got this bike in uh, 2016 and to my knowledge, I'm one of the first people to turn it into a little mini moto. I didn't see any videos on YouTube or nothing, you know, of anybody doing it, you know, before me. So uh, I figured I'd go ahead and break it down to y'all. So what I did basically, this bike is, you know, dead stock besides the things that break on it and then the uh, the wheels. So obviously you can see I changed the handlebars and the, the levers or whatever, because those are the things that break. The handlebars were crashed so much, they were all like cranked inside. So I replaced those. And then, you know, the shifter and the levers and stuff. But besides that, everything else is stock. You know what I mean? I got a new chain for it or whatever. These rims right here are Gator rims. I know it's real dirty, but uh, Gator rims, I'll put the website in the description. Or you can hit up my, my man, Bernan at 73 moto parts i'll leave that in the description also you know so two places you can get it from he's based out in california 73 moto parts so if you guys are in cali you can you know get them locally but basically what i did was i wanted to have these set of wheels to ride supermoto or mini moto and my uh, motocross wheels to ride in the dirt you know when i wanted to even though it ain't that beast of a motocross bike you know just because just so i have both sets so what i did was i bought a set of brand new hubs for the front and rear and I sent them to the dude at Gator Rims and I had him lace them up to these 12 inch mini moto rims. Now they're both the 12 inch front and the 12 inch rear is what it is. I got some meet this tires on here. The only two things I would warn you guys about, you know, when getting these rims, the only issue I have with these rims or have had with these rims is that anytime you want to take this front wheel off, you got to take the, uh, the rotor off with it. So you got to take the rotor off first and then, you know, loosen this all the way up and take the, uh, this joint all the way out and then take the wheel off. Otherwise, if you try to just take this uh, bolt off right here and then slide it all the way out, this this joint right here gets stuck in the rim. You see how it's like right there? It won't let you take it out because this rotor has no room to slide out, you know, past the, uh, you know, this right here. So every time I take the front wheel off to change the tires or whatever, you gotta uh, take the rotor off too with it, which ain't no big deal. It's, you know, just four screws, so that's easy. And uh, on the rear, rear swing arm, had this little piece of metal that was like sticking, you know, from the inside of here, right here you can see and it like kind of stuck out like a little bit like that and it would let me slide this uh wide 12 inch wheel inside of there so what i did was uh got a dremel and i just eh, grinded it all the way down took that little metal piece out and then you know the wheel went back and forth in there easy besides that everything you know mounts up perfectly just like these stock wheels do and i just got uh all i did was just get an extra spacer right here that way i have an extra spacer for you know each wheel set then i got a sprocket also so i don't got to change sprockets when i change back and forth to the dirt wheels and the uh street you know set up but really if you guys wanted to do the cheaper route what you can do is take your stock wheels and just cut the spokes on them and just take the hubs out and send them over to you know whoever and get them laced up so i'll go ahead and break the tires down for y'all real quick the uh i tried a bunch of different 12 inch tires and uh you know racing and riding and practicing and everything my personal opinion is the pmt tires they feel the best on the racetrack they got really good grip on the racetrack and they feel really good. They got a lot of grip. They last, you know, a decent amount of time. Those are number one, you know what I mean? But for practicing in the parking lot, I probably wouldn't do PMTs because, you know, the slicks take a little bit to heat up to get up to, you know, good, you know, functioning temperature and a little bit more expensive, I think. The uh, Mitis tires that I got on here now are the my favorite, honestly, my personal favorite. They're almost as good as the PMTs are, I'd say, if not just as good, and they last a really long time. So I do the soft front, I do the medium rear. I've tried the super soft front, but I probably wouldn't do that unless you're, you know, you got a bunch of money and you're trying to qualify on some, you know, mini moto tires or whatever. But I usually do the soft front. I tried the medium front. I guess you can do that, you know, it'll last a little bit longer, but I got the best feeling out of the front end with the soft front tire. And it'll last just about the same time as the rear. You know, sometimes the front wears a little bit faster than the rear, depending upon how you ride. But you know, I usually replace them both at the same time anyway. I've tried the hard front before. I do not recommend doing a hard front or hard rear because they're pretty slippery, you know what I mean? Not unless you're doing a 24 hour endurance race, you know what I mean? And even then it's kind of like, you know, they're a little bit too dicey. But uh, you know, the medium rear soft front has always worked best for me. And the third best tires I would say are the TT93s, the Dunlop TT93s, which aren't really my favorite because those things will wear down uh, just a little bit and then they'll, just stay, they'll look the same physically for, you know, forever. And then you just keep riding, 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 they'll just get slippery and slippery and slippery, but they'll look good. They'll have their tread and everything, they'll look good but they'll just be really slippery you know what i mean and they don't last as long as these mitis tires do so i wouldn't recommend getting those unless you got to or if that's your only option but uh these things these mitis tires they'll grind all the way down till you see the thread sticking out of the tire even then it'll still feel really grippy you know you'll just look one day and be like wow look at the threads on the tires but even then you know it's still got really good grip 
You know what I mean? So um, I really recommend these tires. But besides that, like I said, everything else is stock. The uh, foot pegs I recommend, getting them cut a little bit. That's what I did with mine. I went to my homie Jason and I had him uh, cut and weld these foot pegs back smaller. Or what we did in Spain before I've seen is you, uh, when this is long, you cut the middle part and then you just bend this part in and then bend that part right over top of that part. So it looks kind of like this, but one part is bent in and the other part is bent around it. Because uh, if you rock the stock pegs how they are with these 12 inch reels, it sits a little bit lower. So if you rock the stock pegs how they are, so leaning or whatever, what it does is it grinds down the bottom of the foot pack more and more until it grinds it all the way up down up to here. And then, you know, it gets to a point to where this part in the middle disappears and then it grinds down these, you know, two edges right here. And then once those get grind down, it's like two knives sticking out. And I actually, you know, crashed doing a wheelie and uh, the bike flipped over and fell on top of my foot. It broke my foot and it stabbed me right through my foot like two knives. So I'll probably be, you know, careful with that, you know, get those foot pegs taken care of. But honestly, besides that, you know, the bike's pretty much stock. You know what I mean? Like I said, I just fix the things that break as I go, make sure I change the oil. I'm about to put a new seat cover on here. I know it looks really busted right now, but uh, about to get that taken care of. And, uh, you know, that's really it. But, you know, I figured I'd make this video for everybody that was asking me about how I make this bike into, you know, how it is from stock and how I feel with it and, you know, all of that. So, uh, Hope y'all like this video.